So this year's local elections obviously were hugely significant and historic for the Green Party across the country. Um, and in Herefordshire, the Greens made two net gains. This was something of a step forward, but it was quite substantially below what the Greens were hoping for. You know, in advance, local activists were saying that there was the prospect of the Greens doubling their seats on the council. Do you think the Green Party underperformed in Herefordshire in these elections? I really wouldn't put it that way. Um, but, you know, you've always got to be optimistic, but also not kind of over optimistic. And um, we were actually tackling some really challenging seats um, against um, leaders of uh, we were standing against both the leader of the Conservative and the Liberal Democrat um, group. And we got great results in those wards, but not quite uh, but not quite winning. Um, one of the members of our, one of our candidates had this fantastic phrase um, saying that, uh, you know, the people who didn't quite win this time are sort of councillors in waiting for next time. And I think that's a really sort of positive attitude. And we know that, you know, politics isn't about it's a marathon, not a sprint. I keep on trotting out all of these kind of terrible cliches, but it totally is a marathon, not a sprint. And we are definitely in the marathon stage. You know, we've been in Herefordshire, we've kind of had some fantastic, really quick growth. Now we're in the sort of steady building phase. And, um, you know, there were several of the seats that we didn't quite win. We only lost quite narrowly. And that's a great basis for um, campaigning and winning next time. So yeah, no, it's not, you know, obviously we'd love to win everywhere we, where we stand, right, and everywhere where we campaign hard. Um, but we had brilliant candidates, really high calibre of candidates, fantastic campaigns. And yeah, just pipped at the post a little bit. Um, and one of the interesting factors there, I think, was that, um, you know, the Liberal Democrats stood absolutely everywhere in Herefordshire, refused to cooperate um, on any sort of, uh, you know, focusing and targeting. And, um, and I think that's had an impact, unfortunately, locally. So some of our viewers might not be aware, but the Greens prior to these elections were in administration, joint administration with some independents. And in the elections this year, the independents got absolutely hammered. And the Tories, it's one of the few places in the countries where the Tories made um, quite substantial gains. So what, what do you think went wrong there for the independents? I think, um, I mean... <sighs> You know, independents are independents. Um, they kind of by definition, you know, they, they do what it says on the tin. They work independently. We actually, interestingly, had two separate independent groups in Herefordshire, plus somebody else who is so independent that he won't go into any group. Um, and I know that that's not unique to Herefordshire. I think Forest of Dean have got something similar, you know. There's, so um, independents kind of by definition don't have the same um, structured approach to campaigning, I suppose, and the same level of... Um, infrastructure and support that we you know now do have available in the Green Party so I think that um, yeah it, it I'm really sad that so many of our fantastic independent colleagues lost their lost their seats Um I think you know one or two are kind of people who were opposed to what the Greens and the independents and the coalition were trying to do have sort of been trying to say oh you know we've got a a mandate to you know the the, the what the coalition was standing for has been wiped out Actually, if you look at it, the independents and the Greens together got a larger share of the vote than the Lib Dems, despite standing in considerably fewer seats um, and one more um, one more seats as well. And of course, the Green vote share grew significantly and the number of Green councillors grew quite significantly, too. So I think it would be a mistake to interpret the um, the results as uh, you know, as, as the general public in Herefordshire kind of dismissing everything that the Greens stand for and that the coalition stood for. But I think that independents perhaps do struggle a bit more with campaigning than um, candidates who have the support of party infrastructure and a whole range of fantastic campaigners um, behind them. So I guess you talked there about the, <clears throat> what went on in the campaign and so on. And I guess one of the things that happened in the campaign is that the Tories, I guess, pushed quite hard critically of the administration's record in power in Herefordshire. And obviously in the context where the independents fell back and the Greens didn't make as many gains as they were hopeful for, what do you think, I guess, the impact of being administration um, had on the election campaign? Do you think that the administration hurt you in the election campaign? Sorry, that being in administration harmed us in the election campaign. Yeah. 
No, I'm, I'm really proud of what we've done as an administration. You know, we've cleared up a lot of messes that were there beforehand. We, you know, navigated the county successfully through the most difficult four year period in the history of the county, COVID and, um, you know, 400 year floods and all of these sorts of things. So, um, actually, you know, and, and the ongoing consequences of austerity and still further cuts in funding. So I think there's a great deal to be proud of in our record, and we've kind of talked about that um, in our in our website a bit. I think one thing that was very interesting, and this wasn't just a feature of the election campaign, but actually um, definitely part of the Conservative playbook, particularly the North Herefordshire Conservatives playbook for the last several years, has been to kind of uh, talk about the Green Independent Coalition, really emphasising the Green, which is fascinating because... The Greens were 25% of the coalition, 25% of the councillors, 25% of the cabinet members. Um, and, and the Conservatives were really kind of desperate to paint it as, you know, this is a Green administration. But of course, as shown by the fact that Greens have won, even if we haven't won, you know, we haven't doubled our numbers, but we've still increased by 30% or something. Um, as shown by that fact, you know, there, there's definitely no voter rejection of what Greens stand for here. There's a steady growth in support for what Greens stand for. But it's just quite fascinating to see that from the Conservative perspective. And I think this is quite often quite a localised thing. It's definitely more of a North Herefordshire than a South Herefordshire thing. Really sort of thinking, oh, you know, if we bang on about Greens being terrible, that'll be a vote winner for us. It's an incredibly sort of simplistic message. Um, and one thing that was, um, you know, potentially a factor in Herefordshire is that they spent tens of thousands of pounds before the pre-election period officially kicked in, in distributing a newspaper full, a newspaper, pretend newspaper, full of misinformation to a large proportion of the electorate here. And that's, you know, that sort of really negative campaigning is just, it's so disappointing and it's so saddening really that you know if, if political discourse is yeah that a party I mean maybe we we, we just have to ex expect it but it's so disappointing that certain parties want to kind of drag political discourse down in that way and just be kind of really sort of nah, nah, you know very very simplistic and deliberately miss you know, misrepresenting information. And again, we published a really detailed fact-checking um, uh, document in response to that. But, you know, we don't have tens of thousands of pounds to send a sort of positive newspaper in response to, to every doorstep. So, yeah, there's a, a, um, a, a an element of uh, money, again, playing a role in, in how campaigns happen, yeah. So the other thing I wanted to ask you about is, um, so obviously you're the parliamentary candidate for North Herefordshire for the Green Party, which is one of the seats the Greens is uh, agreed to targeting. And, you know, at conference, you said that uh, there's a real opportunity that the Greens will be able to win a seat off the Tories. What do you think these local elections that we've just seen mean for the North Herefordshire uh, seat in the next general election? I think there's there's lots to reflect on, definitely. Um, I think we've learned some really um, interesting and useful lessons about the campaign playbook that um, will be used by the, you know, by our opposition and by the Conservatives, the North Herefordshire Conservatives, um, particularly. Um, and that's that's all really helpful, you know, for warned is forearmed. And um, I'm certain that there is more that we can do and better in terms of communication. And actually, we've got a new staff member starting work with us shortly, uh, working uh, uh, especially on that. Um, I think that, you know, the election results that we've seen nationally really demonstrate that there, there is that appetite for change in places like Herefordshire in uh, rural areas, in traditionally conservative areas, you know, there is that really strong appetite for change. And in some ways, you know, having a, there's, a, there's an advantage in um, being in opposition, isn't there? I mean, the places where Greens have made really strong gains in, in the local elections is um, where they've been able to say, look at how terrible things are nationally and look at how terrible things are locally. And it's all the Conservatives doing that. And what we've had in Herefordshire is, I suppose, a bit of, you know, uh, yes, appalling local MP, you know, really 
has been absolutely hopeless at defending Herefordshire's interests, North Herefordshire's interests, um, for years and years and years, has endlessly voted for cuts to local services, et cetera, et cetera, and yet still, um, yeah, manages to spend tens, tens of thousands of pounds somehow kind of blaming it on the people who are at local level in the council trying to trying to fix the issues and, and really focus on the day-to-day getting on with doing things in the best interests of local people. So what I take out of the local election results in Herefordshire specifically is a lot of les- lessons around communication. Um, and I think that, you know, that only makes our campaign stronger in the long term. Um, and, you know, I take a lot of um, hope from the national um, election results and also a kind of sense of, you know, whenever you don't quite win as big as you'd hoped you might do, um, there's always a bit of a sense of flipping out. You know, we had fantastic candidates and they haven't quite got in and they would definitely have been better than the people that have got in, you know. Um, so, But what's the alternative? What do you, you know, you throw up your hands and you think, oh, well, we're never going to manage that then. You know, let's kind of give up and go home and just... Actually, no, of course not. You know, the, the lesson is, right, we've got to do better, work smarter. Don't think we can possibly work harder, but we've got to learn how we work smarter. And, um, you know, and come come back. And it's again, it's back to that marathon. I mean, I'm the worst person to talk about marathons. I couldn't run a marathon if my life depended on it. But um, it's it's that sense of being in for the long haul. And when I got involved in the Green Party, it's now eight years ago now that I got involved in the Green Party and I didn't get involved thinking yes you know we're gonna win power loads of power in all sorts of places and didn't do that at all I got involved in the Green Party because I thought I really believe in these principles and I want to stand up for them and I want to be part of a kind of you know a drop in that ocean of shifting the dial in the direction of a more positive sort of politics. And I absolutely feel that we still are part of that. There's always going to be little bumps in the road and little ups and downs and everything. But if you gave up as soon as there was, you know, your success wasn't quite as enormous as you'd hoped it might be, you know, you, you, (laughs) that would be ridiculous. So actually I'm taking a lot of kind of, um, you know, fire in the belly from um, the, you know, the experiences that we've had, um, in administration from the current experiences of being in a very interesting no overall control situation so who knows what's going to happen in the next week um and yeah I think a lot of lessons um that we can use really really positive and, and creatively and proactively uh, to strengthen our campaign to win the parliamentary seat too.